Hello again and welcome to another small session of explaining things you do and things you don't do with the happy drum. Okay, this is just for starters again. If you are now beginning to play the happy drum. The deepest tone is always here outside. So once you put this deep tone here always, then you have the pattern. Always the deep tone outside. Okay, these are your sticks. Some people say mallets, right? And um, <coughs> silicone. And with most instruments, you have to treat treat the instrument like like somebody, you know, because you want it to also sound good for you. So playing it too hard, hitting it, beating it, is not really going to sound good, you know. So instead of beating it, it's better if you play it, you know. Okay. So you see me do this, which means that I can stop the tone. Or I can let it travel. It does a very, very long traveling time. The same way if you are playing it with your hand, you have to learn how to hit the tones, you know. about it is like if you do that then you really don't have any quality from the instrument yeah you have to actually find where the music comes you know said before two ways you can use the hands or the sticks but always to find where it makes a nice color you know if you went like this it's nothing ready that's a little better so you have to actually find where it sounds properly and what you can combine with. This would all come as we go on with the, with the workshops and so. We'll have a system that you can follow where you get notes that come together or where you get notes that could be used between. Yeah, so those are the first steps when you begin to play the happy drum, yeah? To understand what happens with the resonance how to stop it. Good, look forward to seeing you again. And I'll try to make you happy with your happy drum. Okay, bye for now.